All right, here we are back in Megaton, having just returned from the ruins of DC. Uh, we were on a quest from Three Dog to get some strange radio antenna and put it onto the Washington Monument to help boost the signal of Galaxy News Radio. He was basically blackmailing us with the location of our father. Gideon still holds a grudge for them for that. That being said, at least now he has a clear objective, or he's at least 90% sure his father is, this settlement, you know, this Rivet City. He'll like to go out there as soon as possible, but he would like to stop in for some medical supplies, clinic. I'm Doc Church, and I run this clinic. Now, before you go asking me for help, you'd better know the rules. Rule one, don't bother me. If you do bother me, you better be damn near dead. I'm busy enough taking care of people I actually like. Follow my rule, I'll keep you patched up, I'll keep getting paid, and we'll get along just fine. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm actually hurt right now. I'm just here for some supplies. Not quite as good as that vault stuff you're used to, but it'll do you. Yeah. Word spreads in a small town like this. Doctor's bags. Be our best friend here. Okay, those are... Four total, not four each. Hydra is better than doctor's bags. Except for the fact that there's a chance of addiction. Turbo going for that much? Really? That is amazing. Turbo is one of the best chems ever. I think I'm tempted to say the best chem in combat. Outside of combat, probably Hydra, honestly. Yeah, we have uh, the Radaway, Radex. Do we have any... We have a little bit of water. Take some more. I think our condensation emitters are recharging. But yeah, I think that's a fair trade. I don't think we need to dump anything right now. Is that it? Let's see if we are hurt. Uh, maybe a quick checkup, I guess. Let's see. Moderate lacerations. Maybe a broken bone or two. I should be able to do you up for seventy-five. Now, Gideon would think that he's probably stretching that a little bit. He doesn't feel broken bones or maybe a few lacerations, maybe a sprain or two, but probably not broken bones. But regardless, he's the only doctor in town. Yeah, got it. Sure, fix me up. Here, hold this for me while I stitch you up. You're just going to get yourself killed out there, you Take know. a sip of his coffee on the house, of course. All better now, you big baby. Can I get back to work now? Right. Yeah, that's it. Okay, then. Try not to get killed out there. Now, as gruff as Doc Church may seem, I personally don't think that He's all that bad. Evening. Sure, he's a bit rough around the edges, but he doesn't like seeing people get hurt. I don't think he's in the doctor business just out of coincidence or money. I think he generally, genuinely, does not like seeing people Welcome get hurt. Even though he time. doesn't do the best at showing that. Hey, Mick. I'll never forget you. Thank you for your help. I hate to ask, but... Do you have any more water? Yeah, I have some for you. Here. You... You don't want anything for it? I don't have any cow- Great. Yeah, listen. Just take it, alright? My... Thank you. Thank you so much, you Might continue to do that in the background, Welcome but... There's only so many dialogue options. Can't really establish a relationship with them. Be interesting if maybe in a future Fallout game you have someone like that, and through enough water donation, you might see them recover. I might be able to 
see them become a different person. Searching. Hi. Looking for that special something. Oh. See what you have. Have a look. See if anything calls out to you. This is reinforced leather armor. Interesting. Now, I'm not certain, but I think, I really do think, that if I bought that and the leather armor to go with it, that would definitely be an upgrade over our 101 jumpsuit. That being said, the jumpsuit... Hmm. Damage resistance might be worth it on its own. The jumpsuit does give extra gun skill and, frankly, it's getting low on condition. Plus we can get some gun skill from this Blastmaster helmet. And that leather armor would complete the look. Our 101 jumpsuit has lasted us a while through quite some dangerous situations, but... I think it's in our best interest to find something more, shall we say, protective. And something that doesn't stand out against all this rock. At the very least, it'd be something to help us blend in. Right? Low on caps now, but that's okay. Walk well, friend. Going to use uh, the powers of, I don't know, quantum tunneling? Hydraulic pressing to fuse these armors together. Look at that. Damage threshold of 5, but that's an extra 18% off our damage flat. I think it's worth it. Also equip this Blastmaster helmet. Our guns and explosive skill up. Some grub? Try the I think that's a pretty grub. matching aesthetic. Evening. Although he'd feel a bit strange wearing this sort of thing. The armor is decently well tailored to fit his form. Looks like they added a bit of room. It seems that there's a lot of people in the wasteland with Gideon's sort of body type. In the vault, he would have been considered a bit scrawny, but out here, people are strong. However, they are often a bit emaciated at times. Not much fat. A lot of hard work and difficulty surviving. I do that to you. Difficulty finding food. We're going to get to need this way on foot for the meantime. But, yeah, there must have been some nice give in the armor. I'll flex it to his form like this. The helmet seems strange it's definitely something he hasn't seen before but he understands the concept of how it works something of a gas mask although the filter itself has probably been long discarded and replaced with maybe mere fabric that being said if it can keep out at least a little bit of smoke and the stench of rotting corpses like those over by the Super Duper Mart, I think I think it'd be something he'd want to wear despite how grimy and strange it may seem. Over here. This looks to be an interior and I have not been in here before. A clothing shop. There's someone nearby. It's one of those. Oh, first shot. That usually does not happen for me. Interesting. I'm gonna do a quick save here in case it's not a place I want to be right now. Actually, I'm gonna do a full save on the interior. I don't imagine this will be the biggest place, but if it has some weird stuff going on, I don't think I want to experience it right now. This combat helmet. Damage threshold of one versus none. Although it is heavy and it is medium, so we cannot wear that yet.
to look around this large empty store. It's a nice looking architecture. Looks ancient, but also modern. Inspired by the Greeks, Romans. He read about those in history class. Probably didn't make the connection between, you know, modern architecture as in pre-war architecture and the Greeks and Romans. At least until he stepped outside and saw over all of the destruction. A lot of whiskey. Has an upstairs, but also something back here. He's going to turn the lights off. Huh. It's definitely empty. But how empty? In the shop. Back over here, an empty safe. Another combat helmet. Huh. It's strange. It's very strange. I think with these interior mods, I just keep running into these empty safes when I think they should have things in them. I don't know. Huh. Well, it's not much. It's not much, but at the very least, it's somewhere to hunker down if need be. Plenty of beds. Bit of booze. I wonder, has Gideon ever drank alcohol before? I think he might have drank one of those uh, atomic cocktails at one point. I don't think he did. He might have. I don't remember. But he knows the smell. The smell is something that can permeate the air from several feet away. Huh. Okay. Hi. That looks like a kid. Hey. Those monsters, they're, they're gonna get me. Um. Listen. Just calm down. No, those things will get me. I can't. I gotta keep going. Um. Unless, listen, unless you tell me what the problem is, I can't help you. Those things. It's all their fault. They did this to us. Uh, listen, kid. I'm gonna say it once more. Tell me exactly what the problem is, or... I gotta leave. I can't stand here all day. You don't care. The grown-ups never cared. Now they're all dead. Well, fine. You'll just die, too. Fine. Fine. Okay. Just please calm down and just tell me what's going on. Please don't get mad at me. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Just help me. Promise you'll help me. Okay. Whatever it is, I... I might be able to help, but I need to know more about what's going on. Those big things. They're all over Great Itch, and they killed everyone. Please, please find my papa. And that... That feels perhaps like a... Spear going through his chest at the moment. Oh, uh, your... Your dad, right, um... Uh, um, is there any way you can hide or like, go looking for him? Well, there is the personal shelter next to the old diner. Papa always said to stay away from it. But I guess it's supposed to be safe. I'll head over there and wait inside. Hurry back. Stumble into a quest. 
So they see this spot here. That was a very strange thing. Cooper's Hotel. Location's right nearby. suppose we could stop by there. But now's not the time. As much as he hates going on this random quest to you know, anything really pulling him out of the way of his main goal. He can't really, in good faith, leave this kid alone. Hearing what's going on with his father, that he sympathizes with him, empathizes with him. We have a strange spectacle on our chest. Let's see if that It's from our armor. I don't think that's supposed to be in our vision. And I think that might be due to the slightly higher FOV I'm using. What's the best way to get to this gray ditch? I think we might be going the wrong way. I'm going to look behind this building here. Really should have followed the kid, but he is fast. I think too much. Okay, I think the hat is making things worse, actually. Yeah, it is. Even if there is a little bit on our chest. Uh, wait? Oh, this might suck. Okay. I'll... I'll put on the leather armor. The hat. Helmet. But, for now, we're just gonna deal with this little bit right here. I'll see if there's maybe some fix for it. Alright, I'm just going to follow the path I know leads to Greedish. Yeah, looping around here and going down. Strange place. I'm down cars here. Usually he'd like to stay low and slow, but... At this point, he feels he has more important things. There it is. Not sure how he's supposed to enter safely, but... Let's slip in from this direction. It looks abandoned like everything else. He's not so sure what those monsters could be. Switch his laser pistol. Hi, giant ant. Goes down easily enough. Let's go check on that thing. It has a slightly different hue to it. Huh. Interesting. Let's take a look around here. Now, these overcharged batteries are tearing through our gun, but they are being quite effective taking down these ants. The Wilkes house here. Oh. Here we have what appears to be his dad. Notice a familial resemblance. Check his body for anything. Probably feel another spear through his chest right now. The Having empathized with someone and not really having it all set in, the realness of it, the differences in it, feels that that sort of feels like his dad. In a way, strange way. I have this rifle here. He doesn't want to see that happen to his dad. Although, from what he can tell, the, his father was a wastelander before. 
before, well, he was even born. So, maybe, maybe he's not all that bad at it. Some ammo of everything we can. There's no telling when more of those creatures might pop up. Strange ant over there too. Let's talk to the kid. We have an opening. Um, anyone out there? Hello? Hey. Come on, tell me already. Oh, sorry, I think I have some bad news for you. Oh no. What happened? <sighs> I'm sorry, kid. Cured. Your dad didn't make it. He's... He's dead? I guess I already knew. Besides, I'm too tired to cry anymore. Listen. He, he would be tempted to just tell him to get out of here, but... There's the sympathy behind it, there's the dialogue of just forgetting about it. It would probably not vibe well in his mind. At least clearing out would be a better option for him. Listen. What, whatever started this, I'll, I'll see if I can stop it. I promise. We gotta stop it, so this can't happen to anyone else's family ever again. I wish I had met you a long time ago, and then maybe my dad would still be alive. Thanks for doing all this. I'm feeling better now that you're here. Can you tell me more about things attacking Greedich? Well... They're big, ugly things that crawl around on six legs. They got huge teeth and skitter around grabbing everything in their path. My papa would always say they're fucking ants. Well, that's what he used to call them anyway. I just call them fire ants. Fire ants. You know of any special way to hurt them? My papa had a gun. He said it hurt those things. But he said they were the dumbest fucking ants he ever saw. He kept telling everyone to shoot for their antenna. Whatever that means. Wait. Have they always been around here? Nah. Those things started coming around only in the last few months. At first, they just crawled around outside our town. But later, they came into town. And, well, you know the rest. What? What exactly happened here? It used to be kind of nice. No one bothered us there. I guess because we were so close to D.C. There were seven of us living there in tall, old brick houses. I think I'm the last one left. Those things took everyone else. Did you know the others in town very well? Nah. People don't like to stay long in Great Itch. The D.C. ruins aren't a great place to make a home, you know. In fact, Papa was talking about moving on soon. We've been here for maybe a year. Who else lived here? Um, besides me and my Papa, there was Doc Lesko, who stayed with us, and Will Brandis, and his Mama and Papa, too. I guess they're all gone now. Interesting. So that, to me, that would only count six, and he said seven of us. So maybe there's one missing person. All right. Okay. Mind if I ask a bit more about the people who lived here? Nah, go ahead. It's just nice to talk to anyone about stuff at all. Tell me about Doc Lesko. He was a strange man. He paid Papa some caps to help him build a shack and carry a bunch of junk into it. Papa called him an egghead, but his head was shaped regularly, so I didn't get it. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've dealt with a few eggheads in my life. Good. 
Where did he stay? He spent all of his time in that shack next door to my house. Every time I'd sneak in there, he'd be sitting at that funny looking TV machine with the green word pushing buttons. Um, do you know what he was doing in Greyditch? Nah, he was a nice man, but he never wanted to play with me very much, and we barely talked. All I know is he was all gone when the ants started showing up. I think they got him too. Did he have any weird stuff in his place? I don't know. All kinds of doohickeys. Boxes with lots of life, some funny glass bottles. Oh wait, he had a big, clunky, shiny man too. That was kind of neat. Oh, shiny man. What about the Brandis family? Well, there is Will. He was sort of my friend. And then there was his dad and his mom. And where did they live? Right across the street, actually. It was pretty swell having someone to hang out with so close by. So, you and Will were good friends? Yeah, Will was super nice to me. He was like a year older than me, I think. He even shared his comic books with me. We explored pretty much every bit of Grey Ditch we could find. I think that's why the ants don't bother me. I had good hiding spots. What about Will's parents? Well, his mom was nice too. She was kind of quiet, but she always took care of me and my papa when we came over. I think she was sad that my mom was gone. Will's dad was... Well, I don't want to be mean, but he was kind of scary. See. What do you mean by scary? He was, like, always watching me and my dad real careful, like he didn't trust us or something. He always kept staring at us from the windows of his house and typing stuff into his TV box. Will said his dad was like an old soldier or something, but he didn't like doing that stuff, so he quit. Now I'll go see what I can do. Be careful, or those things might get you. Close that back up. Ah, oh, someone over here. Wouldn't want it to linger around over there. Yeah. Automatic weapons, even ones with stocks. Not great for him. Let me check the skill requirement. Yeah, 75. He's not going to be doing very great with this thing. Shaking around in his hands. You know, he doesn't have... I don't even know if he has the strength for it. No, he doesn't. This thing is overpowering him quite easily. This thing... He'd probably be fine in close quarters, but... Honestly, he'd rather use it from a distance. Dump the ammo he has for it and just try to use it. Given the durability of these ants, he thinks that the rifle might be justified. Okay. Cleared a few of them out. And what he thinks they might be coming from somewhere. He doesn't know where, but... Maybe not a single spot. He doesn't imagine that this is the last of them. Otherwise, they probably would have won the fight. Managed to clear him out over time. Over those few months that they started showing up. Got like a nest of sub or something of the sort. We checked in there. This house right here. Brandis. Cigarettes. Now, in a way, this would sort of be like grave robbing. For people that presumably were quite friendly. But 
would he find a problem with grave robbing? At least in this indirect type of grave robbing. This is their home, after all. I don't think he'd find much of a problem with it. Maybe there's something in the back of his head. Some bit of scripture or Bible lore, shall we say, that tells him this might not be the best, but as long as he's putting it towards a good cause. Frag grenade. It's the idea of a soldier. I thought that was like a magazine or something or a note, but it was just a wall texture. Right, he's got a terminal. Gotta hack it. Divine. None. None. Oh, that's actually good. D I. Okay. Dud removed. Dud removed. Ah. Oh. Do the old scrub scrub. Ah. Dud removed. No allowance replenished. Okay. T I V M N E J A M. No. Yeah, it can't be that. No. I think it's got to be earned. Whoa. Yeah. It's like we've been locked out of that terminal. Not great. I didn't really even see a different password it could have been. Maybe I just suck at it. This place over here. There is an interior over there, but I have been there. It's not a place you'd really want to go. Abandoned house here. This is the... Uh... No, 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 no. Uh, I, was, I thought that uh, for a second there that the last person might have been Doc Lesko, but no. This little magazine we can't use. Weapon repair kit. Nice. Some optical illusion affecting me somehow. The bottom of my screen. No, it's not an optical. It's this again. Cat eye, dirty water. Radio in the bathtub. A bit morbid, but you know how it is. Generators that appear to keep functioning forever. Maybe they're powered by those Fallout 4 fusion cores. The ones that last for over 200 years. Money. You know, people actually like that in Jet. Medex. Basically morphine. Alright. I want to see about maybe looking into recipes for Molotovs. 
maybe a mod or something. I don't know if there's a recipe in Fallout. But it would definitely make sense to be able to make Molotovs from vodka and all that. Huh. Let's check on the other side here. Was I just up here? I forgot. I'm like that. Yeah. I think I was up here. Vaguely remember. There's this other set of buildings over here. I don't think they actually have anything good in them. Anything, really. Maybe a bobble or two. Let's take a peek around. Is there anybody here? Any bodies? Airdropped crate. Oh. We have some supplies here. Another key card for Fort Detrick. Huh. Let's use a 9mm submachine gun. Mixed snap cakes. Nah. Is that the same note we had before? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I know what's in there now. I I started this episode previously uh, through like a, an old attempt. Uh, I did not think that it had been something that would be good to do now. I do not think it would make sense to even delve in there. And since, you know, I, if I were doing, like, a normal role-playing playthrough by myself, then obviously I, I would probably have dipped in and then dipped out, but I have not done that on this save file because I have episodes to record, and we can get to that when we get to that. This shack here. Okay. Got a hollow tape. Let's see what it says. This could be the fifth time I've forgotten the code to my desktop terminal. I really must learn to be more organized. The password for my terminal is Formesidon. How hard could that be for me to remember? Note to self destroy this hollow tape as soon as move to new lab is complete. Very forgetful seeming. Doctor. This is some chemistry stuff that Gideon might have sort of understood. You know, the different types of baubles and such. You know, I've taken a chemistry class before, but the most complex I've ever done it was really a Bunsen burner and some stuff inside. That would be in high school, though. Sexy sleepwear. But by the sounds of that hot tape, that uh, Doc Lesko guy was certainly... would certainly meet the classification for an egghead if his voice is indicative of his head. Okay. Please do not access without proper permission. Okay. Let's turn on the robot. Empty. Yeah. Robot command input. Out of range. Okay. Personal notes. Where did I go wrong? Batch 827 is a complete failure. Must return to original formulas and begin all over again. 
uh, pressure of working in these conditions without proper lab equipment is to blame. Maybe I didn't splice the genetic in... I didn't splice the correct genetic instructions, or perhaps I'm fatigued. A27 is proving to be a disaster. I must introduce a new formula, or I may not be alive to see my hypothesis come to fruition. Okay. Sample location discovered. Found the perfect specimen for my experience inside the Marigold Station. I've set up a shop underground for a while. Prepare for the experiment. All I need is last minute programming in my robot, be able to perform injections, be able to prove to everyone that my formula is a viable alternative to the destruction of these misunderstood beings. Dangers. I've realized the dangers involved with tampering with nature. I've heard all of the rhetoric and the hoopla about playing God. Uh, determined to reduce these poor things back to their harmless original state. Uh, only through genetic recoding is this possible. All that's needed is a proper test subject. Well. Maybe. Maybe he'd disagree with Lesko on some things. Certainly there are better ways to deal with a bunch of fire ants than genetic resplicing. Perhaps a blitter or two would work. Take our time here. It's definitely not very good with rapid fire, but single shots like that you can hit just fine. You know, when I was getting hyped for Fallout 4, pretty much like how everyone was, I was really hoping we'd have more places, more select communities like Grey Ditch and Nipton, which we'll see much later on. Places like those that we could actually rebuild in specific ways rather than just randomly in places in the middle of nowhere. It feels a bit more real. It would be to be in places like this. Right, rebuild places that have been brung down, places that are empty. You start attracting new people to this safe haven. It would be if not for the ants. I mean, look at all this fortification. Look at strange spot up there. This might be another one of those scenarios. Now, I don't know what's in there. It might just be a, a fake door. Might open it up and it's just a wall. Okay, let's stay away from that. Countered a few of those, but really does not like engaging with them like that. This building here. Brian Wilkes is safe for now. We have time to see what this might be. A library of some sort. We'll, re we'll realize that when we step inside. I'm going to save over the previous save. Oh, there we go. A little iffy. Now, if this is any bit like the last spot I went to, then this... Okay, no. That's a big guy. That ain't happening. Not in those close quarters. We... <laughs> we'll keep a mental note of that thing and this place. You've never heard the phrase, noped the fuck out? Well, now's your first time as we have now thoroughly noped the fuck out of there. It's like, you ever see those videos of 
people finding those balls of spiders all clumped up together super dense and then like poking it with a stick and they all start sprawling out hundreds of them maybe even thousands of little tiny spiders harmless ones harmless ones i will i will make that clear for the arachnophobes but still quite spooky to see all of that movement coming out of a strange creature ah. we are now on fire as they start blowing fire at us we realize why they are called fire ants we saw fire outside but i suppose we might not have made that connection to their ability shoot the antenna the advice he gave us hi AI in Fallout games is not great, especially for creatures. Okay. Snuck up on us. You know, if anything, the, the fire helmet thing that we're wearing might not be bad. Might not have to breathe in that hot air. Now, a fun fact that I that I know about is that, you know, when you see in movies when, like, a firefighter is going into a house and they, a pipe bursts or something, and that all that steam starts spitting out, that's not actually steam. That's the, the stuff that you see is condensation. It's, well, the water that has congealed. I had a bit of a gas leak there. It's the uh, condensation that has congealed in that area. And maybe a bit of dust getting kicked up or whatnot. But steam, as long as it's above that boiling point of water, it's like 200 some degrees, 100 Celsius. As long as it's above that temperature, it is completely invisible. Same goes for clouds. And you really don't know how hot steam can be until you really experience it. It can be as really hot as anything else. Molten iron, even, at the extreme. I don't know where to go right now. Skeleton here with a revolver. Take a look at that. Fifty. Hmm. Now, real me knows that this weapon is amazing. Like, actually, one of my favorites. However, Gideon would probably not be great at holding a one-handed weapon, or. I think you use two hands when you hold it with the scope. Yeah. You would not be great at hitting with this thing. Holding this weapon that doesn't have a stock with this scope, which I do not imagine has great eye relief. At the very least, we can maybe follow the trail of the ants. Have what appears to be a gas leak here. Oh, and it breathes out a bit of fire. That one was tougher. That one was tougher. Breathed out a bit of fire. Caused that gas leak to erupt. He thinks he could start to use this sort of detail. Now, I do think he might you would probably be able to see actual gas leaks in real life like that. As long as they were pretty extreme. Could be wrong on that. Getting a bit of a headache. 
첫 개다. 이 볼프 here engine 이야 that not be great I tried to destroy that to maybe get rid of the light but I think maybe it would be better better used tactically as a little explosive shot a few times apparently that ant does not like to stay at the bottom of the stairs and it does not like to climb them either excuse you yeah laser rifle time laser pistol oh these ants I've been told that getting bitten by a fire ant is supposed to be quite painful, but I've been... I've seen a lot of fire ants in my time, and they've never bitten me, so I would not know. Okay. None of those hit? You definitely start to prefer the mines over the grenades at this point. Come on. Oh. Flames caressing our face there, but not quite burning us. Those did. I'm just standing right there. Mm, maybe it's the stairs that are causing these mines to not work quite perfectly. Strange machinery here. Maybe like monitoring equipment for the subway hard to tell there's a lot of utilities that that could be attached to air quality seismic activity lights water maybe till you startled me you really mustn't creep up. oh my god okay Way to, way to ruin a, a nice, oh my god, okay, way to ruin a nice encounter here. But yeah, yeah, there's there's a Dr. Alesco right behind this door, locked away, sealed in there forever. Ah. Hey, you're, you're that egghead, I mean, scientist that kid was talking about. Well, yes, I suppose I am. Dr. Weston Lesko's my name, and it's good to make your acquaintance. What brings you to my little experimental ecosystem? Um. Experiments? What do you, what do you mean experiments? My experiments are of a complex nature and would take a scientist to explain. Oh, wait! I'm a scientist! How marvelous! Wait. My foray into reducing the girth of these insectoid creatures is of utmost importance. I intend to generationally reduce their immense stature by way of a pre-birth-induced mutagen. Isn't that clever? Oh, so you're trying to make them smaller over time by injecting the eggs with the mutagen. My word, you understand perfectly. How marvelous! So... What's the problem, then? Well, I'm afraid I made slight miscalculations in the mutagen. Instead of lowering their size, the brood hatched with a new biomechanism. I call their genetic aberration pyrosis, the ability to emit flame from their bodies. I may be able to correct this error, but, but I can't get near my equipment. 
shocked that you didn't attempt this in a controlled environment first. Your knowledge of experimental procedure surprises me. Indeed, I have skipped a step and directly modified an entire brood. Perhaps I was too hasty. I was so certain it would work. To correct this mistake, I'll need to get to my terminal to modify the mutagen. What exactly do you need? My portable terminal is set up in the hatchery chamber near the Ant Queen. If I can reach it, I can continue to work on improving the mutagen. Yeah. Why not just kill the queen and, you know, be done with it? If I were to do that, months of data would be lost. No, no, the queen must remain completely unharmed. Your objective would be to eliminate what I call her quintet of nest guardians. You filthy little abominations. And how will this undo all the mayhem you've caused? I've rigged the equipment at my portable terminal to emit what I call an inhibitor pulse. Once I send this pulse, all of the remaining ants will lose their empathic link with the queen and frenzy destroying each other in the process. So, that's all there is to it. What do you say? Okay. There is one option that... Now, I, I did do this quest before on a different playthrough, and he did not give me a... Uh... A reward that he should have given and that's strange i don't know if it's part of tale of two wastelands but one of the options i didn't select here was to be a little greedy so maybe i'll i'll do this line and see how the outcome is maybe i'll strip it from the cannon immediately listen i spent a lot fighting here but books aren't gonna buy me new ammunition why can't man follow the ants' example? They work together as a team, every waking moment dedicated to the colony. They require no wealth or material items. Yeah, Everything yeah, yeah. Everything they need is provided for them by their fellow insects. But I digress. If it's payment you need, all I can offer is one of my mutagenic bio-enhancers. Oh. Mutagenic bio-what? I've managed to isolate some of the fire ant genes and distill them into human-safe genetic enhancers. I can inject you with one of these formulas and you'll find yourself with either enhanced strength or enhanced perception. Not only that, but you'll be somewhat more resistant to fire. How marvelous! Uh, that sounds... not terrible. Um... I have a hard time processing being pumped with mutagen. Different, maybe, from what he expected with the mutated hand in the stomach thing. <laughs> Alright, if it'll stop the ants from burning down Great Itch, yeah, I'm in. You will? How marvelous! Be careful, my friend. The nest guardians can be quite tenacious. <sighs> I'll be going now. Finally, a chance to recant my mistake. How marvelous. Yeah. Here's what he's supposed to look like. Or I should do this at a skewed angle. Oh, all right. I, I took those screenshots to, uh, to put a picture of him in the just to add something to my hypothesis it's a fill picture for him and the fact that he was a door for a second one of those things sometimes the skyrim style of uh dialogue is a little better sometimes pistols we can use those to repair our own after all he did basically doom us to having to do this in the first place. This whole mission.
doesn't like him much. He doesn't despise him as much as he finds him to be a moron of sorts. In in I don't D and D terms, he'd definitely be the the Lesko guy would definitely be more of a intelligence eighteen wisdom six kind of character. Yeah, we need food actually. Ramen steaks. We're bordering on the next level of radiation sickness. The ant refuse pile with strange nectar inside. And a big boy over there. I think this would justify the use of the sniper rifle. Okay, I thought that was Fallout 3 mesh, like, interrupting our shot, but no, we got it off. It's just very dusty around that corner right there. Look at that thing. It's bigger, yeah, it's definitely bigger by a little bit than the ones we saw outside of Megaton. Of course, the coloring is off. We're taking the nectar. Look at those mandibles. Imagine getting bitten by that would be like being stabbed two combat knives if it goes deep enough it'd feel like a machete oh yeah that's that's pretty gruesome wants to get as far away from those as possible Okay, mine time. I say mine or mine. Oh lord. Okay. So, you might have noticed there that it did start to act a bit of funny and recoil when we presumably blew its antenna off. Interesting thing to note. rifle here. Do you have plus pressure? I think it, plus P is plus pressure. I'm pretty sure. I missed that shot. Okay. Grenades, please don't fail me now. Okay, I think I might have goofed here. I don't want to kill the Protectron. <laughs> As the Protectron starts to get into a frenzy. I th I'm not sure if breaking it fails the quest, but... Ugh. Okay, this is not good. Uh, our leather armor is definitely not terrible for preventing flames. But yeah, he would not want to destroy the robot that is presumably the one... Your attempted escape is only making things... Presumably the one that is involved in doing the clean stuff. Okay, we can definitely outrun it. No problem. Uh, it was a bit of a scuffle there. Things went wrong. An, an improper placement of grenades... At least it wasn't a person. We killed five of them, so that's the quintet. Get out of there now. Hold on. Okay, I don't think it harmed the Kiween, just the robot. Hey. I've detected some changes within the Queen's hatchery with my equipment. What's transpired? I think my work is done here. Oh, how marvelous! Please, tell me what happened. Come now, the faster you tell me, the faster I can provide promised payment for your services. I... I killed all the nest guardians. It's safe to go down there and do whatever you need to do. Then I will proceed to my portable terminal at once and make the necessary changes to the formula. Thanks very much for everything. You've been quite a useful lab assistant. 
ready for whatever weird juice you have. Hopefully it doesn't mess me up. How marvelous! But which injection did you want? Will it be the ant sight or ant might? I guess ant might. He'd he'd think about this for maybe a few seconds, but I I think it's unanimously more important to him to have that physical strength rather than the perception. Of course, he does tend to get snuck up on quite a bit, but he'd rather have the ability to carry a gun and use that equipment and just be more careful in general than he would to, you know, have all those senses. I'm not sure exactly how this would be flavored. I don't think it'd be eyesight. I think it'd be more smells and hearing that would be increased with perception. Ant mind is more, more easily explainable. But yeah, I think it's going to be ant mite. How marvelous! Ant mite it is! Hold still, please. Yeah, I actually get the reward here. Unlike last time. Alright. Strength increased by 1. And 25% resistance to fire. Oh yeah. Look at that. Okay, that's plus 1 from something. But, I don't know what that is actually. Wait, I can check in effects. From the Brahmin stakes, so yeah. We're definitely at that nice flat five, and with that, our special array is looking quite good. Actually. Yes, what did you need? What exactly do you think I should do about Brian Wilkes? You should take him away from this place. Find him a home. It would be difficult to accomplish my experiments with him scampering about and asking an interminable amount of questions. Don't you realize you've ruined this entire life? You have your ideals and I have mine. I'm down here to complete my experiments at any cost. If that means the loss of a few lives to save generations of lives in the future, it's a small price to pay. Should have at least told him you were alive. He thought he was all alone out there. I can't risk leaving this place. I have to continue monitoring the hatchery for any further mutations in the next brood. I have no time for children and their petty games. What do they know about the importance of my work? Can't you at least take responsibility for his father's death? All scientists take responsibility for their failures because it comes with the territory. I will take this experimentation to completion without roosting on the moral high ground. If I allow emotions to enter the mix, all this time and energy spent will have been for nothing. Some cost fallacy right there. What are you... What are you going to do now? Well, I will continue my research. There has to be a way to reduce these creatures to their former size. Until then, I will be staying in my shack next to the Wilkes' home should you ever wish to visit me. Yeah. We'll see. Be ever vigilant. Those from the genus Solenopsis are not to be trifled with. Be tempted. He's, he's tempted at the moment to put a bullet in the back of his head. Dr. Lesko's, that is. Seeing all the damage he's caused and really him not being regretful about any of it. He's dangerous. Dr. Lesko. He doesn't abide by the same 
moral principles that you would expect a scientist to. That's like one of the main things that science demands is that the science is done ethically. And that is not ethical science by any standard. He's hardly even a scientist, more of a... Why? Okay, but he leveled off of the one ant. But like I was saying, he's hardly even a scientist as much as he is just some random dude performing experiments. Not caring too much about the outcome as long as he gets his hypothesis complete. Ah, oh, we're level five. Let's choose what we have wisely. What can get here? I think getting explosives to 45 would be a good start. Maybe lockpick 20. That would allow us with the jumpsuit. Actually, our mentats can bring us up to that. 25. Mm-hmm. I do make a good point to myself. Oh, but it's a nice 20. I mean, look at that. Plus, I wouldn't have to use Mentats. But let's, let's think about this here for a second. Would Gideon hesitate to use Mentats? Maybe he's all, sort of been interested in using them. Maybe he has snuck a few at some point to study. They're basically Adderall from what I can estimate. Maybe he sort of likes them. Maybe he wouldn't be too appalled to use them more often. Speech. Uh, I don't think 20 is very useful for anything. Okay. Explosives 45. Let's put the other two into... Let's just split them between science, sneak, and repair. For a lack of any better option. Okay, level five. Where's my pants again? Not gonna be taking that. More scrap metal from dead robots. In theory, that could be quite useful from A, getting more scrap electronics for weapon repair kits, and B, getting more scrap metal to sell to Walter, which I think nets experience. I'm going to check something real quick. I'll skip. Okay, so I checked it. The experience, the experience granted by Walter by giving him scrap metal is not actually that great. It's like five experience per scrap metal. And if we did get like 10 of them, or 20 of them, let's say, and brought them all back, that'd still only be like 100 experience, which would be, I imagine, maybe a quarter of that of killing the robots themselves. So, not really worth it in my mind. Hmm. Iron Fist. That's... no. <laughs> Educated? I always have a hard time deciding here. I could do Bonsai and justify it as the mutation doing weird things to us, but nah. Dad, hacking gets easier and chems last 10% longer. In theory, Hevo could be useful, but I'm... The reason I don't think I'm going to take it is because if you th throw... Uh weapons further, that includes grenades, then they would have more speed, more energy to bounce around and make tactical placements harder. At least in, you know, interiors and such. So it's really just shifting the the power of using it. I, I mean, I've never used this sort of perk. I've never invested in that thing, and that's my reasoning, but I don't know if it's correct. I think it is. Intense training could theoretically be useful. Be quite useful. Child at heart, I think would actually be quite... 
quite it's thematic for us. Although I don't know if that has long-term use in... I don't think there's a child at heart perk in Fallout New Vegas. I don't know if that would benefit us. Let me check. Then. I don't think we're going to take child at heart. I don't think it... I think it has very limited uses. And honestly, yeah, it's thematic. Yeah, I've said, oh, yeah, we're going to make decisions based on our character. But, again, long burn. This is perhaps the, the, the spot where we have the most freedom, honestly. Okay. Swift learner. Mm. Retention... Okay. I think taking intense training and putting that into strength might actually be pretty good for us. We can double up our strength bonus. <clears throat> but I want to do more unique stuff, you know? Okay, how many how many points is that? That's forty points by the end of this, maybe. By the end of the capital wasteland, I would think. I mean, yeah, honestly, I think it'd be the most beneficial, even though I'm not too much of a fan of that. We are here. We have William Brandis this key laser pistol firing at nectar energy cells yeah i guess great minds think alike in a way his family's nowhere to be seen i don't know her protectron's gaze there switch to the lower energy cells lower powered ones be a bit more economic i don't think these ants are going to give us too much trouble place over here uh, consist nice okay disengage the lock what's in here hi Brady safe. A ripper. Take that. Scrap electronics, we take that. I don't think there's any way for us to get average lock picking right now. I know what it, I know what that is, but it's yeah. Let's check where this leads out to you. Eastbound Falls Church. Could take a peek, I guess. Hello? I think we're in DC. Oh yeah, we're in DC. I'm sorry. Oh, it's Blood of the Hood. It's Blood of the Hood. Um. Hi. Hi, hello. Hi. Uh. Uh, let's, let's not. He, he was tempted, maybe, to go help them out. 
but they did associate themselves with three dog and it was really three dog who blackmailed us opinions of the brotherhood of steel are not the highest although he would acknowledge them to be decent people as much as he doesn't really like them that much same thing with the doctor except you know the doctor is kind of an asshole he's still technically doing the right thing right now that being to try and fix this look at that that aesthetic pretty nice let's get out of here Go find him, kid. Although there is a spot we could stop by. Wait, is that a second abandoned home? Oh, it is. I think I missed this. Yeah. Bird cams. It's kind of ridiculous how easy it is to make money with cams and follow. They just appear everywhere, you collect them, and you just sell them for so much money. Steady. I always check behind the uh, wardrobes for saves. Safes. This police pistol here. Be a decent sidearm for us. Be willing to bet. Looks like there aren't any left. Hi. The ants, they're all dead. Every single one of them. It was so weird. All of a sudden, the ants went nuts and started fighting each other. It was like they were totally crazy. It was really scary, but kind of cool at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm just glad you're safe. I wish I had something to give you for all the work you did, but I never really had much to start with. I guess now you'll be on your way, and I'll have to try living here by myself. Hope you'll come back and visit someday. Uh, listen, I can't leave you out here alone. Maybe I can find somewhere for you to live. Really? You mean it? Oh boy, thank you so much. I'll wait in my old house for you to come back. I need to bury my papa anyway. Just don't forget about me. Yeah, yeah, um... Do you know anywhere I could look? Any people? Any idea where I could find someone to take care of you? Well, Papa always told me about my cousin Vera. She lives in some big giant ship somewhere or something. Papa called the place Rivet City, but I don't know where it is. Ah, uh, I've heard of it. I'll... I was going that way actually before you kind of interrupted me, but... Maybe after I go there, I'll, I'll come back. Listen, kid, I... I gotta go. You stay safe, alright? You're pretty swell for a grown-up. I think that might be the first time someone's actually given him a, an earnest compliment since he's left the vault. I found a key on his... On, Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm losing my mind. I thought I saw someone, like, sitting on the stairs in that shadow. On the rail. But we, we found a key on, on his body. This locker here. 
Oh my god. Hi. We have this big ass rocket launcher. Okay. We can make room for that. We can most definitely make room for that. Um, assault, Chinese assault rifle. The regular assault rifle is not great. It's more accurate than the Chinese one, but actually, we meet the we meet the strike requirement for that. Yeah, we do. And the guns requirement. Yeah, we'll take the regular one. But oh boy, look at this monstrosity. Gideon doesn't know what to do with himself right now. In the back of his mind, he's thinking, should I really take this with me? I mean, it's heavy, it's powerful, but... I... He'd feel like he'd be tempted to use it constantly. It, an easy answer button to some pretty difficult situations. I mean, look at it. He's got a missile already loaded in it. Um, it's heavy. The ammo itself is very heavy, too. I mean, yeah, that's a pound and a half each. Oh, boy. By merely having this thing and the ammo for it, we're basically sacking probably three weapons. This is... A, if we had like an RPG inventory, that'd fill up three weapon slots for us. You know, like an old school roguelike RPG. But, uh, I think we found a win button that is slightly more viable to use than the, than the mini nuke launcher, the fat man. Speaking of which, I think we left that in our cabinet. Honestly, the fat man could very well get Gideon killed with the missile launcher. Could be a bit more secure about that. He'd know what that does, how that should work. Ha. Huh. Nuka break. Yeah. I think it's honestly a time for me to take a break as well. And consider the options going forward. I think next time. We're just gonna, we're not gonna stop at Megaton. Maybe we would stop at Megaton, I don't know. Maybe we can stop in the hotel and do a little bit of extra, you know, checking around here. But I think after that, diverting back and going, following our original course, that being going down along this coast and cutting towards the Rivet City, I think that would be the best idea going forwards. But with all that being said, I suppose I'll see you guys next time.